So now that we have our listener up and running, the next order of business is to execute the set of payloads that we had created earlier. So that should be in the document slash payloads directory. And we should have all of our payloads here. We have a service 64, we have an SMB, EXE, PS1, and a bin file and a TXT file. Let me quickly start with the executable, which can be executed by simply double clicking it and getting a shell back. And you can see we have a connection back here. You can double click it or click right click and click on the load adjacent tab option. You can see that our uh, child process and the sleep has been configured as per the auto runs that we had configured earlier here. We can execute the PowerShell payload in a similar manner by simply executing that within a PowerShell tab or by downloading it from somewhere and executing that in memory as well. So Badger PS1. And we should have a quick connection back from our PowerShell payload as well, which I can load in the adjacent tab. And the same auto and commands as you can see has been sent out here. The next payload that I would execute would be uh, the run DLL one. So I can simply start command prompt run DLL 32 space badger DLL and main and hit enter. And we should have a connection back from our run DLL 32 as you can see. And going back to our BRVM01, I will execute the SMB payload, which if I search for my badger, you can see that it's up and running. And let me check the IP address of this SMB payload that we are running because uh, we would need to connect back. This is the IP address and the host name is BRVM01. So let me see if I can connect back or basically I can uh, connect back to BRVM01 or I can resolve the host name because I would need to connect to the name pipe of that specific host and it might take a few seconds to get a response back depending upon the reception of that host. Perfect. As you can see, we are able to connect to that specific host. So now if I type pivot underscore SMB, we can see that it requires two arguments and it gave us an error because we only typed one and it takes the name of a named pipe, whatever name pipe that you have specified. The dot simply stands for either current host. If it's a current host, it basically means a period. If, it, uh, if it's a remote host, then you would need to specify the full host name. And we are going to specify the host name of BRVM01. That's the reason why we specified the, uh, we checked whether we are able to ping that specific name. And as we remember that our, the, uh, the rest of the name of the name pipe was same, uh, as the one that we typed here in the payload profiler for our SMB profile. I'll hit enter and I should get an error 1326 or 5. 1326 simply stands for incorrect username and password. That is something that you would get if you're using an incorrect domain and hostname. If you don't have an access, then you would get an error 5, which is access denied. So if you are in that specific domain. So I'm not in the domain right now, so I should get a 1326 error, which simply means that my username or password is incorrect, perfect. And if you just quickly open up Chrome or a browser, and if you check for get last error 1326, you would see that 1326 simply stands for access denied. As you can see, error logon failure, username or password is incorrect. The reason being that our B0 does not have access on our BRVM01 host, because this is a different host. We like to use make token. For the time being, I'll create a network token because you want to authenticate over the network. I will have to specify the host name or domain name where I want to connect back. I'll specify the domain name here. If it's a local host, which is not in a domain, then you would specify the host name. The username, which I know for the time being, since it's a demo machine of mine, it would be event data. The password would be user at one, two, three, and I'll hit enter. In a real life scenario, this would be this can be any host that you are trying to that you have compromised during a team assessment and you would want to move laterally. And now if I execute pivot underscore SMB, I should be able to get a new beacon over here. More like a badger. From that specific host without any errors. Provided that the username is correct and we are still able to reach the host that we are trying to connect back to.
it might take a few seconds depending upon how it is able to resolve the host or not and perfect as you can see we have a connection back from our smb host and you can see that it states that it's a pivot stream which means it is being redirected via b0 if i right click and click on pivot graph you would be able to see that b3 is being via pivoted via b0 which is simply your b underscore 64 https so the next order of business is to execute the remaining payloads the bin file or uh, the service file and the text file we'll take a look at the service file when we start dealing with psexec we uh, will take a look at the bin file and the txt file right now the txt file simply contains uh, our shell code in raw hex format which we can also convert our bin file into let me show you how we can convert our bin file into a raw hex format in c so if i type x64.bin arrow shellcode.h and if i do more on shellcode.h you would see it's converted into the same hex style format the unsigned card array is named as badger x64 underscore bin and if i do a tail hyphen f on the same thing and uh, my bad on the shellcode.h you would see that this is simply the size for that specific host right now so i will go back and i'll create a new quick payload.c file i'll let it that and i'll type found exclamation found windows.h h and i will also include the shellcode.h file that we have type int main return 0 and over here i'll type lp void edit address pointer that will be getting for the long address pointer would be a virtual alloc just to show you how this would work and the name was badger underscore x64 underscore bin from what i recall underscore len was the length of the file mem underscore reserve pipe mem underscore commit comma page underscore read underscore read execute i believe page underscore execute underscore read write if i am not wrong and it will simply go ahead and allocate a virtual memory with this region in the real life scenario you would uh, be better off using some other technique instead of simply using virtual alloc and committing rwx region that's read write and execute better to use page read write and then execute or some other technique then the next portion is to memcpy and the address pointer where we will be copying our data the length and the name of the file that will be copying our file to and perfect so we will be copying uh, the unsigned car array into our executable region for these many length and we'll be executing that so the next portion is to create a typecast for a void pointer and execute it and i'll type address pointer and close perfect and i'll type this so simply i am typecasting my address pointer here to void function type pointer and i'll be executing that with the parenthesis so you should simply execute whatever shell code is there within our address pointer i'll execute this min w underscore hyphen gcc hyphen m64 payload.c hyphen o payload.exe and i should have a payload.exe file if i go back and if i execute this here let's say payload.exe i should get a connection back from payload.exe perfect as you can see we have a connection from our payload.exe as well uh, now the final thing to take a look at would be to create the service file that we had over here as you can see so let me just simply copy this to a directory where it is reachable by the service control manager and let me just copy to desktop because i am on a shared drive and i cannot directly copy it to the c directory okay so now we have since we have this file i'll start up a command prompt as an administrator i'll navigate to c slash and i'll create this service file sc create uh, let's say the name of the uh, transaction broker service this is the name if you remember properly is it is the one that we added within our uh, payload when we created this service as you can see so we are using the same name here space bin path 
equals to c colon slash badger svc exe and it has been created as you can see our that's what our process, uh, process hacker says so i can type sc start space transaction broker service and if i hit enter it start it started if i go back to my retail war room as you can see we have a connection back from our system user as you can see and over here if i type let's say uh, get underscore privs we should get that we should basically be having all the privileges that would be there for a normal system user which wouldn't be the case if i type it for a normal user if i have let me wrap token and type get underscore privs and you can see we are restricted over here whereas we are in an elevated session here